hi everyone welcome back to the channel you're watching our class school here in this channel right now we are discussing about various data integration scenarios with azure data factory as in service today in this video we will discuss a scenario wherein we have millions of record in a source system or in a source file and we want to insert or bulk insert those millions of record into a sql server table so for an example i have a sales data available in this csv file and it has got 1 million record as you can see if i scroll it down it has got 1 million sales record and i want to bulk insert these record into a sql server table so i in the sql server i would dynamically create the sales table why dynamically create because it will save my time because the idea will automatically create the table but in may in your case it may possible that you might have the sales table or the table already presented and you want to use that table to create the record but both of them will work fine from the approach perspective as our objective is to make sure that how do you dynamically insert the record millions of record using the azure data factory so that is what i'm going to show you for that i am going to create a new data flow pipeline so to create a pipeline i'll simply go to the pipeline section from the factory resources click on new pipeline that will launch the canvas to define the new pipeline as we are talking about millions of record i would simply go with the data flow option so that will you, you can also create the record from the copy activity as well but i want to go with the data flow option data flow what is data flow we have discussed that in our previous videos if you would like to more know more about the data flow with an example you can go and watch and you can watch or you can refer to the previous videos so here in the data flow i first of all i have to specify my data flow as of now there are no data flows created as you can see from here as well so i'm going to define the data flow first of all i can define it by clicking here or i can define it from here so let me click here on this plus new button that will add a new data flow option in the canvas here first of all i have to specify at least one source it can have one more than one source but as we are referring to one input file which is a csv so we are going to talk about that csv file as in single source so source as in the blob storage because our csv files is there in the blob storage so here is my blob storage container where i have this csv file which contains 1 million record of sales table right the size of this particular file is 119 mb which is close to 120 mb now let me define the data source which can fetch the data from that blob storage container so i'll click on add new I'll define the blob storage type and then file type i'll be using as in csv because that is a csv type of file i'll be calling it as in ds blob csv and then link service there is a link service already created in our previous video so that will basically connect help me connecting to the source storage account and the container that i can test it by clicking on this browse button let's click on the browse button it will launch all my containers so input container is the container where i have my file so here is the file as we can see so there is a zip file as well but right now i'm interested in this csv file so you can select this file directly if you want to but i would what I will do is I will dynamically select the file as in parameter. So I'll provide the parameter to my data set. Hence, I'm not selecting any file names. I'll click OK. So that will set the data set as in source. So my source definition is ready. I'll see that my data set is here. So I'll double click on the data set because here right now it is missing the table name. So table name is missing. Now to define the table name or the file name, not table name the file name i have to provide as in parameter hence i am going to define the parameter let's click add new parameter give it a parameter name as in file name and then the parameter type is default parameter now as the parameter is created i'm going to use this parameters here in the path section and i'll, I'll use this parameter to use it as a file name 
in the dynamic contain section i'll double click on this file name and it will use the file name as an at the rate data set dot file name so now my file name is going to be dynamically set with the help of the parameter which is defined or attached with my data set right along with that what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to my data flow and here it's using the data source well and good no problem with that next i'll click on this plus icon right what it will do is it will uh, next before before i define any further activities let me go and explore the other tabs of my source so with the source you have option to specify filters or you know perform various operation on your source data projection basically gives the list of columns which are available in that csv as we are talking about the csv it has a flat structure so we do not have to do any kind of a transformation with the in incoming data that will automatically import it, the schema now of course if you would like to change the data type uh, to a specific data type for an example here then that you can do it no issues with that so for an example let's say we have let me just go back to the column at the top we have unit price cost sold id right or the sold num number of sold items all these four or five columns or the order id that we can make it as an integer or float type so let me go ahead and do that because by default when you import the csv into a particular table that makes the column into a string type so let me just make it as a decimal type or double type so i will call it call this as a well as a decimal or double type so this is something new we are doing it right now uh, in the in our previous example we have not done any such things so let me just use all these total profit decimal as well so all our these kind of a columns are decimal type and here the ship date i'm going to call it as in date type order id i will make it as in let's say integer type similarly order date again i'll make it as in date type with priority so let's see what is the value we have in the priority so it's a character type fruit item type we don't want to make any changes here right so that is it so we have all our columns rest of the columns are going to remain as is right so our pipeline is still running let me just go back to our sql server database and see if, how whether it has created a new table or not so i'll expand the tables refresh the table you can see that we it has got the table now and if i run the select star from select top thousand record from this table and we'll see whether it has inserted those many records or not So I'll use the count operation just to get the count of number of records it has got in this table. So now there are zero records in this table. Let's see if our pipeline is still running. Yes, it is. So our pipeline is successfully completed and it has taken two minutes, 39 seconds to execute the one million record and it, it includes reading those 120 MB of file records to the Azure Data Factory and then inserting it into a table altogether. So entire activity takes this much of time. So let me just run the query just to make sure that what is the count we have. So you can see that our sales table has this much of count which is 1 million. So let's are from this table top 100 record let's, let's say it. select top 100 records from this table so these are our records now we have got and we expand these columns we have got the values and the data type as well now right now at the order date and ship dates columns are missing the value the reason it could be because the date format is maybe not expected by the SQL server so I I should have been converting these column values before inserting it into a database so we in our pipeline data flow we should basically have a step 
which can convert those column string values to a specific data type or date type value and then if the values will be inserted successfully in these columns in a particular format right so that is it in this particular video so we have learned how to insert we have seen the demonstration how do we how we can use the data factory and data flow pipelines how we can you how to use the azure data factory service with the pipeline and data flow activities to insert a bulk record which is more than 1 million record and it has taken just 2 minutes right or close to 3 minutes which is very very cool i hope you have found this useful and if it is please give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thanks for watching it see you in the next video